Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hoag, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. I'm AJ Hoag, author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. VIP members, we are having another meeting, another Zoom meeting. You can talk to me, ask me questions. Uh, we, we're going to have a discussion about our challenge. So VIP members, watch your email. I will send the invitation link very soon. In the next couple of days, I'll send you an invitation link. How to join our video meeting. So, so it, it was really fun talking to you last time. And uh, seeing your faces, obviously, is really fun, too. But dirt on my... What is that? <laughs> um, so, this, today we're going to talk about vocabulary. How to learn vocabulary. How to learn vocabulary. Obviously, for you in English. And for me, I'm doing Japanese. We're continuing to prepare for our challenge. My challenge with Fluent in Three Months. That's a website. Check out their website, by the way, fluentin3months.com, fluentin3months.com, and they have a challenge. They, they have also have a challenge. I don't think they do English because everything is in English, uh, but any other language you're learning. So, you know, a lot of people ask me about, you know, they tell, they say, AJ, how, sh how should I learn Spanish? How should I learn Russian? I'm trying to learn Italian. I'm trying to learn Chinese, uh, you know, Mandarin. Oh, um, but I can't find any courses like yours, AJ. What should I do? And I usually, I, in the past, I always recommended Link, which I still do, Link, link.com. And I also would recommend join a challenge over at Fluent in Three Months. That's what I'm doing with Japanese. I realize, you know, I need some support too. <laughs> you know, I, my, my goal with you is to encourage you and, and keep you motivated so you keep going. And I realize, oh, I don't have that myself. Nobody... I've got no one I can uh, talk to or, or uh, about my Japanese learning. So I'm looking forward to starting that challenge. And of course, next month, you start your English challenge. We're doing our Effortless English Challenge again, another one. And this time we're doing conversation. So we did, uh, in the past, we did listening, which I think was our first one. A lot of people put it, did huge amounts of hours. It was really great. And then we did speaking, including shadowing. And then we did a consistency one, just doing anything each day. And this time, conversation. So you're going to talk to people in English, real people. Okay. All right, let's get to our topic, how to learn vocabulary, because this is an important thing for the challenge. You know, for myself, learning Japanese, I have two goals. One is conversation. That's the main goal, just to talk to people real people, face-to-face, -face, real life. So either on the computer with italki or in the real world. So obviously that involves speaking and listening. And then my, as part of that, to improve my speaking, I really need vocabulary more than anything. And I think this is true for most people. Of course, grammar, there's a, a place for learning grammar, but I think it's best to learn it naturally. That's been my observation. But vocabulary is tough because you need words to understand people. You know, this is one of the main problems I have with Japanese is people just use my vocabulary too small. People use a lot of words I don't know, so I don't really know what they're saying. Um, and then, of course, there's the, when, there's the problem when you're speaking. You want to say some idea, maybe something a little, a little more complicated, right? Not super simple. You want to, you're trying to communicate trying to say your idea or, or talk about something, uh, but you, uh, you can't remember or you don't know the words in English. How do I say this? Uh, you don't have the words. And so it becomes difficult to say what you want to say, to communicate your idea or your topic. So this is a problem, right? It's a big problem when listening. I think it's even probably the biggest problem for me is, is on the listening side. But it's, it's also a big problem with speaking. So vocabulary, I get questions in all the time, how to learn vocabulary. And I think there are two basic parts of learning vocabulary. 
And part one is just learning it the first time, right? Just f finding new words or phrases. I think phrases are better, obviously. But um, finding those new words and phrases. And, you know, which ones should you start with? Where do you find them? How do you learn them the first time? And then the second problem, which is also a very uh, big challenge, is how do you remember them? Because we all have the same problem. We forget. You remember and you learn a new word yesterday. And then today, I uh, can't remember. What was that word? <laughs> you forget or you see it. You see it in reading or you, you hear the new word. And you're like, ah, oh, I, I, I learned that word, but I, now I forget what it means. So this is the forgetting is a problem, obviously. So remembering, and that means some kind of reviewing, some system of reviewing. This is my weak point because I get very, 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 very bored doing this. Uh, but we're going to talk about some different systems that people use uh, for finding the words, the new, the new vocab, and then how do you review it so that you remember it when you, when it, when you hear it again or when you try to use it again, it's not gone, right? Long-term memory is what we want. We want long-term memory because a lot, we have this experience and school is, this happens in school all the time. You study for a test it's short-term memory, right? You study the day before the test and uh, you, you, you remember everything. You get a good grade on the test. You get an A. Yes. But then two weeks later or one month later, you forget most of it. It was all short-term memory, right? Not long-term memory. Long-term memory is, you know, is years and years and years, maybe forever, your whole life. But uh, short-term memory is maybe two weeks, something like that. So short-term memory doesn't help us very much in uh, language learning because uh, you need to remember the vocab for a long time, right? And keep building it. And there are so many words, thousands and thousands and thousands of words to learn. So it's, a, it's quite a big challenge. So let's get in this. Okay, first, where do we find vocab? And this is where input happens, right? Where we talk about input. It's listening and reading, listening and reading, listening and reading. That's how you learn new things, right? You don't learn new things from speaking. Right? You're practicing what you already learned when you speak. But to get new words, you have to be reading and listening. So let's talk about listening first. Where could you get new words from listening? You could get from, uh, of course, from lessons, like my lessons are designed for this. That's why there's a vocab audio lesson and where you're going to, you can, and you get the text also, so you can read it as well. So that's a good way to get, you know, that's how you're learning new vocab in my lessons. You could listen to movies and podcasts, but this is a little difficult, right? Because it's very hard to hear a new word and hear it clearly. So you're, you may be listening to a movie and you hear a word, a new word, but uh, what did he say? And, it's, and you might even rewind and repeat it again and again, but you don't know how to spell it. And it, it can take a long time and be very slow and very difficult to just grab new words from audiobooks or grab new words. This is why reading really does help a lot because you can see it, <laughs> use a dictionary, write it down or copy it somehow, right? It's... It, I think reading in general is the best way to learn new vocabulary, right? To get new words that you don't know already. Another way you could do it listening, since listening, just listening to something. Oh, hey, Slavisa, good to see you. Uh, just listening, you know, it can be very tough to get new words only from listening. Uh, but another way you could do it is with your conversation partners. And this is probably a better way because you can ask them. Right. So, uh, for example, when I was uh, practicing Spanish about seven years ago, I would talk to my friend uh, Oscar, unlimitedspanish.com. <laughs> if you want to learn Spanish, unlimitedspanish.com. Check out Oscar. He's great. His lessons are wonderful. They help me so much. So anyway, I would talk to Oscar every week. We had one an hour uh, conversation in Spanish every week, and he taught me a lot of new words because we would talk and he's really good. He was a really good conversation partner. So he would say new words sometimes, and he and I would 
if I was confused, I'd say, well, you know what? Okay, you know, what is that? And he would then write it down. He would type it in like a Google document while we were talking. So as we had our conversations, he would be he would make notes anytime and he said a new word I didn't know. I'd ask him, what is that? And he'd he'd type it. And he'd he'd write type it and he'd put the meaning in English. And also when I would try to speak Spanish, I would try to say something. Maybe we were talking about the Camino de Santiago, right? I was getting ready for that. So I would maybe I wanted to say, um I'm excited about the Camino. I'm excited about walking the Camino. But I didn't know the word excited in Spanish. So I would say, uh, you know, estoy. Uh, and I would say, oh, oh. And I would just ask him, you know, como se dice excited in Espanol? How do you say excited, the English word, in Espanol, in Spanish? And he would, again, he would tell me and he would write it down, type it in the document. So after one hour talking to him, I had a big list of new words and new phrases, right? Every time, every time I, we had a conversation, I got a lot of new vocabulary from him. And not just single words, but like useful phrases, uh, very common phrases in Spanish. So this was a really great way because it was, this vocab was connected to my real conversation. It was connected to topics I wanted to talk about. Right. At that time, a lot of it was traveling and the Camino de Santiago because that's what I was focused on for Spanish. Walking the Camino de Santiago. It's a walking trip. So that was perfect. So it was very, very interesting to me. That's exactly the vocab I wanted. Sometimes you listen to a podcast or something. Maybe you don't care about the topic. So it's harder to remember the vocab because you don't really care so much. So I think conversation partners, that's a great way to learn vocab. You, even if uh, they don't help you, even if it's another learner, you can just write down in your own language. Like I could write down, I'm trying to say I'm excited about the Camino and I can't remember. What is, what is excited in Spanish? I don't know. I would just make a note as I'm talking. Write down excited in English. Just write it in English. And then later... After the conversation, I have a list of English words and I'll just go to a dictionary and find those words in Spanish. And then I, again, I can make my own list from a real conversations. This is what I'm going to do in Japanese for my challenge. This is, will be one of my, probably my main listening way, uh, method for vocabulary. Because I'm going to be doing uh, conversations with italki partners and with my wife. I'm lucky. I live with a Japanese speaker. So uh, uh, I can uh, get that vocab from those real conversations. So that's listening. That's I think those are the best ways to get from listening. I think, as I said, reading is probably the best. Certainly, if you look at Dr. Krashen's research, he is a strong believer that reading is the number one way to build vocabulary and you know Steve Kaufman he over at link lingq.com again uh, a big believer in reading and myself as well because I'd say I learned a lot of vocab for my trip from Rosker it was great but overall in general I learned the most vocab from reading Spanish and in Spanish, for an for a English speaker, Spanish is really easy to read. So I quite enjoyed reading in Spanish. I still can do it. Yeah, seven years, no Spanish. But if I open a book, I can. my speaking is not very good anymore. Uh, it was never great. <laughs> but, uh, um, but the reading is, is, is a really great way to build vocabulary. Obviously, you all, I think most of you can read English, so I recommend that you do reading. Read some books in English because it's a great way to build that vocab. Probably number one. In Japanese, I have a big problem because I can't read Japanese the, the, the characters. It's a, it's a very big job to learn those characters. It's, and it's, a, it's a long process. It probably takes a couple of years at least. So I've decided not to do it yet. Maybe someday in the future I'll do it, but right now I'm focusing on just speaking and conversation. So 
most of my Japanese vocab will come from conversations. And, and also I can find there's some easier ways to, to read Japanese that for kids and for foreigners. <laughs> and I'll be using those ways. It's called romaji and katakana and hiragana. I can read those, so I'll be using those. But most of my vocab for this challenge will be focused from conversation, getting it from conversations and other books that where I don't need to read the characters. So for some languages, reading can be quite a big thing, right? If you're learning Thai, you've got to learn the whole new Thai alphabet. If you're learning Korean, you got to learn the Korean Hangul system, which is actually not too hard to read. It's uh, pretty easy to learn. But like uh, Chinese and Japanese, pretty tough. <laughs> so luckily for you in English, I think most of you in school, this is maybe one good thing that school does do, is you, you do learn how to read English, uh, at least at a basic level. And that's very useful. So you can use reading. I, I encourage you during this challenge to have to do some reading every day. Because it will help, even though we're focused on conversation, the reading will help you build that vocab, which you can use in your speaking. Okay, so next is reviewing. The next problem we have, we get these new words. We, have all, we make all these lists of words, right? You're getting them from reading. You're getting them from talking to people, getting them from, you know, maybe movies and audios, whatever. And we get all this vocab and we look at it and we kind of look at it and study it. And, okay, God, I, knew the, I know the word excited in, uh, in Spanish or whatever, right? But then the problem is we forget. <laughs> Two days later, ah, oh, what's the word? I forgot, <laughs> right? And then we have a new challenge and that is remembering long term. How we got to review. We have need some kind of system for reviewing the vocab. And we can have a very, how should we say? We can have a very organized system or we can have a very loose and relaxed system. I think it depends on your level and it also depends on what you enjoy. There's not one rule for this. So on the loose side, on the very relaxed side, you can just read a lot. Steve Kaufman recommends this quite a lot. Again, I think this is helpful when you're more at least intermediate level. A lot of you could do this in English. It, like I could do this in Spanish. I can just read books and I'll see a new word and I'll look it up and then I'll forget it. But then I, if I keep reading more books, I will see that word again later some other time. Maybe the next day, maybe the next month. But I will see that word again sometime just because I'm reading. And I'll, oh, I'll probably forget it. And oh, I'll look it up again. Now I know it a little better. And just by doing a lot of reading, I can learn and remember uh, a lot of new words in this way. It's kind of a, a natural way of getting repetition, of getting review. You just keep reading more and more books, lots and more and more new books. You just keep going and you don't worry too much about uh, any other system for review again i think this works better when you are a little more advanced and you can just read quite a lot easily at the more beginner levels i find this is uh can be very frustrating <laughs> and something more organized helps so how do we do organize there's the old way of flashcards paper flashcards right you just get a piece of paper and you write the word or the phrase on one side. You write the meaning on the other side. And then you have, you know, big stack, a big group of flashcards and you review them each day or whenever. Right. We all used to do that kind of. I think there's a benefit of that is I think writing them by hand helps you remember. I do think that. But uh, but also then you have all these cards everywhere and um you know, it's hard to know, like, how often should you review them? Should you review them all at the same time? After, If you remember one, should you keep reviewing it later or just put it to the side and throw it away? Eh. But anyway, some people like that physical flashcards. I don't. I don't like flashcards at all. But uh, anyway, some people do, so it's fine. 
Another kind of flashcard system we now have are different apps, right? Different apps on your computer or phone. I mentioned Anki yesterday. It's probably the most popular. A-N-K-I, Anki. And it's these are basically flashcards, but there is now a computer program that will show you the cards at different times, right? The idea is that you you look at a card they show the computer shows you a card the app shows you a card right let's say a genki in japanese genki means like healthy energetic um so genki and then there's a, a button and i can say i know this word or i don't know it if i say i know it the computer remembers the app remembers and it will show me again maybe but 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 not but later like a longer time because i know it i said i know it i still remember it It'll make a longer gap, right? A longer time. And then it'll show me maybe a week later, shows me that word again, Genki. If I remember it again, if I still remember it, then maybe it'll wait like a whole month to show me the next time. If I still remember it after a month, maybe it will get dropped and I won't review that one anymore, right? It's all, it's all controlled by the app. If I don't remember it, it'll show me sooner, right? If I if it shows me Genki and I say, oh, no, I can't remember. What is Genki? I forgot. So then it might show me again in just uh, 10 minutes later or five minutes later, it shows me Genki again. Uh, and now I remember because it's it's sooner. It's called spaced repetition is what it's... This is the name for this kind of system. But it's basically flashcard apps, <laughs> Okay. Some people like this. It's a good way. You can just, so you get your words, all your new words, you write them down, or you get them from conversations, you get them from reading, and you put them into the Anki app. And then every day, you maybe do 20 minutes or 30 minutes of review on Anki. And this way, you build your memory long term. That's another system. Again, some people like this. Some people love Anki. And they do, they'll do hours of Anki every day. And some people don't like it at all. Like for me, I find it super, super boring and I don't like it. And, and I also just doesn't, I don't know, I don't remember. It doesn't work for me. I don't know why, but I just find that I, I never really learn much long term using Anki. I don't know why, but you can try it and see if it works for you. Another way you can do it is something called the gold list. And this is the method I'm going to try this time. I've never done it before. So this is my first time trying it. I'll let you know how it works for me. But the gold list, I'll do a show about the gold list, like I said before. But it's basically every day you write in a notebook, you write out that vocabulary, you make lists. So on one page, you make a list, maybe 20, 25 new phrases, new words. And then two weeks later, you look at the list and you see, do you remember any of them? You don't, you don't, you never, you don't review them the next day. You wait, you don't look at it. Two weeks, two weeks, at least two weeks. You can do longer. At least two weeks, you do not look at the list again. So this, the idea of this is that you're focusing on long-term memory. It's, it's, it's different than Anki or space repetition. You're not trying to remind yourself again and again and again and again. In this, you're waiting a long time and then you look at the list. How much do you remember? You know, maybe most of it, you probably forget most of it, but maybe you remember a few. So you drop those. You put a little X, you drop them, and you make a new list, just the ones you don't remember. That's your second list. You wait two more weeks again. Then you look at the second list. <laughs> and again, you drop the ones you remember, and you make a third list. So the lists are getting smaller each time, right? You're starting with a 25, maybe dropping down to 17, 18, something like that. Then you're dropping down again to maybe to 12. Then, you're dro then you make do it again. Every two weeks or more, you're looking at the list again. And it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And the idea is that eventually you learn all of it in long-term memory. And of course, every day you're making new lists. So this can become quite big, <laughs> right? I'm going to try this method. I like it. I've started doing it. I've been doing a few days now. I like the things I like about it. I like handwriting. 
I really, I've always liked journals and notebooks and writing out things. And I find that it does help my memory quite a lot to write something out. I like that. It's very relaxed and low stress, right? It's, it's, I'm not having to look at flashcards every five seconds and, oh, do I remember that one? Oh, I forgot it. Oh, and it, there's none of that. It's just very relaxed. Write it out very slowly. Hmm, next one, next one. Next day, make another list. Go back, review it. It's So it's very... Um, I like that that it's relaxed. I like that it's physical, using physical, real paper, real pen. Some people say that this is, you know, this method works very well. Others maybe don't like it. So I don't know myself. I'll let you know how it goes. And if it works for me, I'll certainly tell you. So these are the, so again, this is another way that's more, another way of reviewing. You just need some way of reviewing. So that those words go in. It could just be lots of listening and lots of reading. Or it could be a, an organized system like Anki, like flashcards, like the gold list. So that's it. Get those new words and then review them to make it very simple. And then you're still going to forget some, but don't worry. You're going to, this will help. Building up that vocab. I agree with Steve Kaufman about this, that certainly at beginner intermediate levels until you get quite advanced, that vocabulary is very, 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 very big. You can communicate with vocabulary, even if your grammar is terrible. Even if with, with no verb tenses, you just use the root verb. <laughs> you can still communicate your idea pretty well. People will understand you, right? But without vocab, it becomes quite tough. Vocab and pronunciation, actually, I would say both are important. Uh, because if your pronunciation is clear enough, people understand you. And your vocab and listening and speaking is uh, pretty big. You can have a lot of conversations and communicate, right? I mean, this is what I would do in Spain when I was traveling in Spain is, uh, you know, I, I could do kind of some of the basic verb tenses, but I made a lot of mistakes and, uh, but I could just kind of put words together because <laughs> I, my vocabulary was big enough that I could say pretty much what I wanted to say. So that's, uh, and then and then later on, you get the, you, more and more as you listen, you can, you learn sentence patterns. And if you get into writing, then, you know, your, your grammar will get better, 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 better. I don't think you need to stress about it. All right, let's get into our comments and questions. If you have your own way, or if you have suggestions for vocab learning, how do you learn vocab? How do you review vocab? Please share it in the comments and I'll read it. We can discuss it. Okay, let's see. Kashyap says, listening and reading is the most are the most important habits for improving in English. Excellent. I'm struggling, Malwa says, I'm struggling for making cue cards for the IELTS exam. So flashcards. So Malwa, maybe you're like me and you just don't like that method. Try, you could try the gold list method. Just look it up, gold list method. I think you just do a search for that. You'll find some different people explaining it in detail. You could try that instead. Uh, because I, I also, I find flashcards, there's something about them I just find them very, very tedious is the word I would use in English. But it's kind of, I mean, just too detailed, too boring. Just, uh, I get really bored with it super fast. So if you do, then try a different method. I, I, I don't think you should stay with methods that you hate. Because I think that your motivation and your energy for English is the most important thing that's going to help you have success if it's a, whether it's the IELTS exam or just talking to people whatever it is i think that's number 1 so you've got to find the the ways that will help you the methods that will help you stay energized with english so if it's there's something you're just like oh this is so boring oh i hate it yeah, you can force yourself to do it for a week, two weeks, maybe a month, but you're just 
you're long term, you're killing your motivation because you're just like, oh, this sucks. I don't want to do it. I don't want to. Uh, right. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> and I finally realized that, well, I got to find some things that excite me and, and make it interesting and challenging for me and real. For me, that's conversation, talking to real people. Like just doing media, just listening to media and reading media, um, it's it's fine. But if I don't speak, I'm, I realize uh, I get bored really, really fast. So uh, I'm really changing my mind about that for myself, and I'll we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just this is all these are all just ideas <clears throat> right now. I'll let you know in three months from now how my experiment goes for myself. Okay. Elizabeth Fonseca says, My best teacher ever. I am from Brazil. Hello to you in Brazil. Uh, Vivek Kumar Singh says, Thanks very much. I learned a lot through your way of teaching. I am applying all your techniques and it helps me a lot to improve my English. Great. Wonderful. All right. <laughs> uh, so, an, uh, Angel Angel Perez says, "Can you, uh, mentions WhatsApp as a possible, you know, some place you can chat with people." Exactly. People use Line, WhatsApp, Skype. <sighs> I mentioned Italki. You know, any Zoom. You could use any of those. Miriam says, hi from, hello from Georgia. Interesting topic as always. Thank you. Is that Georgia the country or Georgia the state in the USA? I've been to both. I'm from Georgia in the States. <laughs> okay, look, uh, Mahinda uh, Siriwardin, Siriwardana says, uh, for me, it's hard to find a person to speak English with. Hardly anybody wants to master English as a second language. It's a pity. Oh, I think you... Well, get on my Gab account. Get on our Gab group. We have a group, an effortless English group on Gab. Gab.com, AJ Hogue. And you'll find... You'll meet other people there who are learning English with effortless English. A lot of people will post, you know, I, I want to try, practice speaking to someone. So create your own groups and start talking to each other. Levon Canary Come says, I didn't have any confidence in speaking fluent English until I stumbled upon your podcast seven years ago. I want to tell you I've been using your authentic English speaking methods. Wonderful. Yeah, it's great. Good for you. Very good for you. Are these my blue screen glasses? <laughs> no. Okay. Hi, Jehog. I'm from Uzbekistan. Toshmatov. Hello. Oh, cool. Fernando Diaz says, two years ago, I heard you hear t in one of your podcasts, a girl talking about the goalless method. Ah, I tried it myself. I think it works well for those difficult to remember words. I don't even remember doing that. <laughs> That's good. I've been aware of the goal list method for a while. I just don't remember interviewing someone about it. That's that's cool. Good. Uh, Mona says, say hi to followers in Saudi Arabia. Hello. Argentina. Lots of countries. All right, let's see. Amina. 
Okay, uh, if we write a list of new vocab in a notebook and review them again and again, is that a good way or would it be boring? Well, try it. I don't know. Is it try? It. It's different. Each person is different, right? Some people love Anki. Some people like it. It's not boring for them. I hate it. <laughs> uh, it's very boring for me. So these are very individual, right? So I would say writing vocab in a notebook and reviewing it. I mean, you could do the gold list method. It has a very specific system. Or, I mean, this is what I did in my, you know, in school, right? Most of us do. You just take notes in class and just review them whenever, usually before a test. So you could try just taking, you know, writing down vocab in a notebook and reviewing it whenever, no real schedule. Um, or you could try something with a more specific schedule like gold list. Try it. You know, I think pro gold list is probably boring for some people too. So you, you've got to find the way that works best for you. So I, I'm just so I'm just giving you out giving you some ideas of things, different things to try, different things other people use. And I think you, you just you got to play with these and try them yourself. Because you know, because you know, a lot of people love Anki. This is why I tried it. I tried Anki several times because uh, uh, several like uh, the guy Matt versus Japan. A whole lot of especially Japanese learners. Seem to, uh, there are a lot of Japanese learners who really go, Anki, 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 they're crazy about Anki. So I thought, well, okay, well, this, you know, I trust these guys, you know, they're, they obviously are having success. So I'm going to try it. And I would just push myself to try it and I, again and again. I tried several times and every time it just destroyed my motivation. I became so bored with it in a very short time. Uh, and I, during our listening challenge, uh, a couple of years ago, I tried it and I kind of forced myself to do it for maybe a month or two. And then I just like, I don't I never want to do this again. <laughs> so you've got to find, you've got to try to play around with different things, right? There's, there's not a right answer about this. Georgia as the countries, Miriam says, got it. I always uh, recommend your channel and podcast to everyone who wants to learn English Stay motivated. Thanks a lot, says Miriam. Yeah, Georgia's a wonderful place. It's a good country. It's a very nice place. Trey Huki says, if I can understand 75% of what you say, what level am I? I mean, I don't know what the, I don't know what level I'd call you, but it's very good. 75% is excellent. That's that's great. I'm a native speaker. I'm I have been talking almost 40 minutes to understand 75% is very, very, very good. So great. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing very well. Uh, okay. So Malbazone says, uh, can you send some notes on grammar? Can you do, so you can use the same, the same ideas for grammar what I recommend, I you know, you know, I don't recommend studying grammar as as rules because I just uh, you can't. I just find you you, you don't, can't remember any of that in the in the in the middle of a real conversation. Maybe for writing it can help, but I think what, a better way to learn grammar, and this is how I teach grammar myself in my lessons, is just sentence patterns. Right, you learning s sentences that contain different grammar. And this is a way of learning it in a much more natural way. And if you want to focus on grammar, you could, again, make flashcards or notebook or something with your sample sentences. Like if you're working on comparatives, comparing, right? This is bigger than that. Um, the dog is bigger than the cat. You just would write that sentence. The dog is bigger than the cat. You could maybe underline bigger than. Uh, just to remind you that it's the grammar you're focused on, not so much the vocab. And you can make lots of sentences with different comparatives like that, or whatever grammar point you might, you're trying to work on. It could even be, uh, you know, some kind of verb tense. But instead of trying to remember, oh, the past progressive uh, means da, 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 you know, and have some big long explanation that you'll never remember, uh, you just would write out, you put in your notebook different sentences with past progressive and um, 
You don't even need to know the word past progressive. You don't need to know the name even. You just have those sentence patterns uh, in your notebook and you would learn them or in your flashcards. And that's how kids learn. I can, this is how my kids are learning right now. They have no idea of any grammar terms, but uh, they're learning the sentence patterns and starting to use them. They're already using past and present and future uh, at age three quite well. It's, it's impressive in Japanese and in English. <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous. <laughs> it's amazing. Here you go. Yakon Albaya says, I am bored learning vocabulary, but I love to read. Ding, ding, ding. Use the Steve Coffin method. I noticed that I'm not struggling to find appropriate words to say, especially when I'm writing. Awesome. So if this, if you're like this, then just read a lot. Don't even make flashcards. Don't do flashcards. Don't do notebooks. Just keep reading and reading and reading. If you use a e-reader, electronic reader, you can, most of them you can just, uh, you know, like touch or click on the new word you don't know and it, it'll a little window will pop up. It will show you the dictionary meaning. You can learn the meaning. And then just keep reading. You're going to, of course, will you remember it? Probably not. You'll forget it, but you'll see it again another time. You click it on again. Ah, it'll remind you a little better. So just do, just do that. Don't need to write down anything. No flashcards, no notebook, nothing. Again, this works well when you can read, you know, fairly well in the language, I think. When you can read English at a, you know, we can start reading some books, not just one page, but you can read lots of pages every day. Then this works very well. Like this is what I, I haven't done Spanish in, in a long time, but uh, this, this is what I was doing for a lot of my vocab in Spanish. I just started reading a lot of books. I was reading guided readers, kind of easy books in Spanish, but that's all I did uh, for reviewing pretty much. And it worked very well. But in Japanese, I'm a, a, a low level and I can't read <laughs> the kanji. So I can't really use that method. It doesn't, it, it would not work for me in Japanese. So it just sometimes depends on how much do you like reading? Do you like reviewing or not? Do you feel like you need that? Um, what's your level? All these things. So you have to, it's not just, one answer for everybody. It's really very individual. So just try different things. Try different things and see what works for you. Find what's working for you the best right now. Yeah, like Elizabeth Fonseca says, I'm listening. I only listen to your lessons again and again, times and times every day. Awesome. That's great. And that's, you know, the whole point of my lessons is to jump you up into that high intermediate to low advanced level where you become totally independent uh, and you can just listen to movies and audiobooks and read books and you're, and then you just get all your learning from the real world at that point, which is great. That's, that's when it becomes really fun, <laughs> you know? David Venom says, I agree, patterns are the key to success. That's all grammar really is. They're, they're just patterns, right? That's all they really are. Could you explain for us some movie clips? Yeah, I could do that again. The problem is copyright. These movie companies are very, you know, aggressive about copyright. They don't like you to use their movies on your channel. So uh, that's why I don't do it very much. It's, it's a great way to learn. I enjoy doing it, but it's just the copyright thing is so uh, difficult to deal with that I kind of avoid it for that reason. Okay, a couple more and then we'll go. Oh, there's Akos. Akos says, uh, I believe we just have to find the way that works best for us. It's probably the biggest problem with the school system. I agree. Schools make the thinking for you and leave you passive and uncreative. We have to be active about our learning. 100%. 100%. You know, this is why I talk about homeschooling a lot, independent learning. The great advantage, the good point of learning 
yourself, not school, is you find what works for you. We're not all the same. Yes, there are general ideas, uh, general methods or concepts that work well for most people. But there are also a lot of individual <laughs> um, choices, right? Like like it we're discussing today. Some people love Anki. It's great for them. Some people don't. Some people maybe notebooks. Some people just want to read a lot. So you've got to find what works for you. In school, they just force everybody to do the same thing. Everybody's using the same textbook, doing the same activities, taking the same tests. It's all forced on you. They force you to speak in class, right? They, you know, you! <laughs> T tell me your favorite color. Huh? You're, you're maybe you're kind of sleepy. You're not paying attention. And suddenly the teacher says, you know, calls your name and you have to answer some question in English. Ah, stress. <laughs> um, everybody's listening and looking at you. It's terrible. So you've got, exactly, you've got to find what works for you and what, is enjoyable for you and that's more important than using some magical perfect method i'm you know i'm very 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 strongly focused on this now that met there are good methods and of course there are some methods that are generally not good for most people but a lot of what makes a method good is what is enjoyable to you that you it's a method you'll keep doing Right? It doesn't even have to be enjoyable, might not be the right word. Interesting or challenging or something. It's just something you will continue to do. If you hate doing it and you stop, well then obviously it's it's a bad method. Even if even if there's a huge amount of research about it that says this is the perfect way. But if you hate it and you can't keep doing it because you hate it so much, it's not really very perfect, is it? Right? So I agree with Akos that the school system, it's all, you know, everyone's sitting in their little chairs, all in little rows, and just the teacher's doing exactly, everyone's exactly the same. And that means for some, the teacher's method maybe for a couple kids is good and they do well. And then for a lot of people, they don't do well. That's sad to me. It's, it's such a tragedy because um, so many kids, so many people, they get labeled, oh, you're learning disabled, you're, you're bad at school, you're stupid. And of course, the teachers don't say the word stupid, but that's what other kids say. And that's what the child believes about themselves. Many times they believe I'm stupid or they say I'm bad at math, I'm bad at English, I'm bad at school, I can't learn, I have a learning disability, I'm ADHD, all this crap nonsense uh no maybe they just need a better method different methods different ways to learn it's individual right so uh i think most of those kids will do very very well i know because even like you see at doman you have kids with uh down syndrome right and you'll a lot of people tell you oh down syndrome oh what a tragedy they have down syndrome they can't learn they're they can never function they'll they, They'll never learn to read well. And here, and you like, then you see these examples of, of these kids with Down syndrome. They're reading at the same level as other kids their age or higher. And they need, but they need different ways of learning. If you put them in a classroom in school, yeah, they're going to fall behind. They're going to be below the other kids. They need different, a different way of learning reading. Maybe they need more time more repetition every day. There's a lot of things that need to change. But with the parents working with them, they do so well, so well, you know, and then so to label them as something, oh, well, they're, they have Down syndrome. That means just there's no hope. That's that's nonsense. Uh, or And, of course, just regular kids, too, that don't, you know, kind of kids that don't have uh, any genetic problems, but still they get labeled with all these labels. And uh, it's sad like hyperactive ADHD. Now they're just normal kids. A lot of them are just normal kids who don't want to sit on their butt for hours and hours and hours in a classroom listening to some adult go blah, 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 talk about stuff they don't care about. They want to be outdoors, running around, using their bodies, physical. They have a huge amount of energy. There's nothing wrong with them, right? Or sometimes it's diet related too. They're eating too much sugar, <laughs> okay? But uh, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with them. 
uh, anyway, it does, it, it upsets me <laughs> because it, it really has such a sad effect on these, these, these kids grow up. And as they grow up, they, they have all these terrible beliefs about themselves that are not true. This is interesting. Mehdi says, the best and fastest way to learn English is teaching it. When you teach, you get to learn it twice. You increase your vocab, you get the transcripts, your favorite movies, and you work out your brain. Yeah, a lot of people say this. Uh, I hear this in jujitsu a lot where the instructors will say that, uh, one of my instructors I talk to a lot, and uh, he says that being a teacher, teaching jujitsu makes his own jujitsu better. He learns it better because he has to understand the techniques better. He has to teach all the little details. And so it, every time he teaches it, he remembers all the little details. So when he's fighting, right, it helps his own technique. It helps his own fighting. Uh, so I'm, I would see how this would be the same if you're teaching English to someone lower level than you, right? You, well, you're, you're teaching them whatever it is, pronunciation or speaking or vocab, you're also reminding yourself every time you teach it, you're also reminding yourself. So it goes deeper. You're learning it more deeply yourself. Yeah, that's a good point. Slavisa says, phrases and idioms are the best way to learn new words. Remember the whole sentence and the meaning. For example, spinning your wheels is an idiom. Yep. I think that, uh, you know, at maybe at the very, very, very beginner level, you, you might learn some single words because it's hard for your brain to handle more. But as soon as you can, you want to start learning more than one word as vocab. You know, include, and this is one of my rules of because <laughs> I've seen this help my students so much, is that you start learning phrases. And I'm doing this in Japanese now. And so you're, you learn a couple words together. And you can start with just two words in the beginning. It could just be two, right? So instead of learning... Uh, a hamburger, I don't know, you could learn eat a hamburger, which is like two and a half words, <laughs> eat a hamburger, right? So you're actually learning the two words with the article a. Uh. Um, so it, first of all, it's going to help you remember if you imagine you're, I don't know, if you, hamburger is an easy word, but if you had no idea what a hamburger was, because you've got the word eat there, immediately you would remember if you remember eat, you would remember, oh, there's some kind of food. And this might help you remember it. So it helps your memory. And uh, it's just, a good, it gets a little grammar in there at the same time. So yes, the more uh, you start, the idea is that with vocab, as you get higher levels, you start learning long, longer phrases and eventually whole sentences, right? And, and this way you are learning more and more grammar as you get more advanced, just because you're learning full sentences eventually. You don't need to force that. And, you know, as a, if, if you, you can try it, write out a sentence. If it's too long, you find, oh, I can't remember all this, it's too much, then just break it into smaller pieces, right? Just find the size that's good for you. For me, like in Spanish, I could do longer. In Japanese right now, I can just do a couple words, really. This is about the, my maximum. This is a good question. Farhad uh, Pur Mahmoudi uh, says, Hi, coach. Happy to join your show again. Which do you recommend more? Learning random vocab from different sources or certain amount of words on certain topics? Number two, I recommend focusing on certain topics instead of just random words. Random words would be like a vo just lists of vocabulary, like you buy a book vocabulary, English vocabulary, and just try to remember all the lists. I mean, you can do that, but uh, I think it's better to focus on specific topics because it creates real world connections. And uh, I think you actually remember it better and it's more interesting, right? Uh, Benny Lewis at fluent3months.com, he calls these language islands. And I, I really like his idea about this. I'm going to use it myself in Japanese. And what he says is that in the beginning, or even for a long time, you just you create an island in language. It means you just focus on a few topics that you are really interested in. And don't worry about other topics. And you learn the vocab 
in that topic. So you learn a lot of vocab about that topic. For example, in Japanese, what do I what am I going to focus on? Well, I have basically three situations where I need Japanese. Family, I mean my wife's family. Um, strangers that I meet at the park usually. It's usually other parents. I take my children to the park to play and there's other moms and dads there and and then they chat with me sometimes, right? They're curious. So, and, but what do we talk about? Almost always we talk about family. We talk about the kids, right? They have, their kids are there. My kids are there. They, they always start the conversation, you know, oh, your kids are cute, you know, every, every time. <laughs> and then I say, oh, your kids are cute too. And then we, what do we talk about? We usually talk about kids and then basic small talk. Where do you live? How long have you been in Japan, right? So that's topic number two. And then the third thing is I do jujitsu. And so I go to jujitsu and I talk to the instructors and the other jujitsu uh, students, learners. So basically for me, family and jujitsu, <laughs> these are going to be my first two islands. I'm just trying to learn a lot of vocab on those topics only. I don't care about talking about business. I don't care about talking about politics. Uh, maybe a little small talk like the weather is okay, is good because... Like at the park, I'll probably use that. So those basic small talk, my job, the weather, you know. But mostly in terms of learning a lot of vocab, really focusing on family, like talking all about family and family life, especially my kids. And then the other one is martial arts. It's going to be talking about jujitsu, which is, uh, you know, most people learning Japanese probably would not talk about that stuff. They would not care about... So I need to learn all the body parts. I need to learn the names of different techniques. How do, how do I say the word strangle? <laughs> you know, how do I say the word, uh, you know, learn the name like um, ude juji means uh, arm cross. And it's a technique of arm. In English, we say arm bar. Right. So I'm learn I'm trying to learn these words in, in Japanese because uh, I want to talk about jujitsu. Uh, someone else might want to talk about... Um, I don't know, anime, like I, I'm not interested in that. A lot of guy, a lot of people and a lot of Americans who learn Japanese, they love like that Japanese pop culture. They like uh, that, you know, anime. And so they really want to learn that kind of vocab. I don't care about that at all. For me, it's much more martial arts. So I think it's very good for your English as well. Like just identify uh, two or three key areas or topics. This is especially for low intermediate. As you get more advanced, you start getting more and more and more and more and more and more topics until you can talk about almost everything. But uh, if you feel right now, oh, my, my speaking, my conversation is terrible. Don't try to learn everything at one time. Choose two or three topics that you really want to talk about or that you need to talk about that are very common might be family. Family is one you can always talk about with anybody, right? It might be more about work or your job. It might, maybe you love politics. Maybe you want to talk about current events. That's okay too. Fine. Um, whatever. Maybe it's the weather. Maybe it's travel. Maybe it's um, nature. Maybe it's a certain book or certain movies, pop culture, music, right? Just Choose a few and learn lots and lots of vocab in that area first. And then you can talk about and practice in your conversations. Have a lot of conversations about those topics. Read books about those topics. And, uh, and then you'll become very fluent, very good talking about those topics. And they'll give you a lot more confidence, right? So in Spain, when I was traveling in Spain, I became very confident talking about travel, <laughs> calling up and getting reservations and uh, talking about the Camino and uh, those kind of uh, everyday, you know, restaurants, all that everyday stuff. But then other things, I like no confidence because I like talking about history or politics or lots of other stuff. I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> I would just be silent because I, 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 really, I didn't talk about those things. Uh, so 
that's what I recommend is just choose a few topics and then just keep adding more and more and more topics and then you'll get better and better. Okay, I'll take uh, one more and then we'll go. Where can you take my class, Arturo? You just go to effortlessenglishclub.com. It's all on audio right there. Adam Kamalov, good to see you again. Okay, Yunus, uh, this is interesting. I haven't heard of this person, but uh, it sounds good. Hey, Fred from Brazil, by the way. Um... Sorry, I'm just reading through the comments. I, uh, I just lost it. It's moving too fast on my screen. Where's oh someone? Uh, where is it? I just it was kind of an interesting comment. Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry. Oh, here it is. Eunice says, "Do one thing every day for thirty days." Says Zach King and John MacArthur. I don't know who those guys are, but uh, I, I like the idea, right? The idea being that this is how you build a new habit that's good, right? Is that you do it every single day, no break, for a whole month. For me, um, three months is about the magical time period for doing something more intensive, uh, which is just interesting because, uh, you know, like Benny's doing the three month challenge, the 90 day challenge, three months. I find our challenges when we've done our challenges that three months is like kind of the perfect amount of time that more than that start. It's hard to keep the intensity. It's nice to have a little break after three months and then come back. I don't know why, but that seems to work. Okay, good. This is the last one. And then we're going to go. Slavisa says, I remember when we were getting ready to listen to your interview with Mr. Acharya Ji. You sent us a link to get acquainted with the vocabulary. At the time, that vocabulary was like atomic physics to me. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Atayaji, uh, he uses, you know, he's talking about spiritual and philosophical topics. And he mixes in sometimes uh, Vedic words, right? This is like Sanskrit from ancient India. But uh, also just, just, you know, general philosophical terms he's a very intelligent man and uh with a very good vocabulary and if you don't know that vocab and those topics it can be very very tough listening to that conversation you're like wow there's so many words you don't know so it can be hard to understand what he's saying right so if for if this was an area like for example you could if you really love that though you're interested in spirituality meditation sanatana dharma buddhism the Vedas. You could study and learn that vocabulary from reading, from listening, right? And then you, the more you learn it, it would become a very advanced area for you. You could talk about that topic. You could understand that topic very, very well. Um, but then if you try to learn, listen to about physics, actual physics, you might, again, like, ah, oh, physics is all, all these new words and phrases and uh, ideas would be, it could be very hard. So it does it does help I think to focus on the vocabulary in specific areas just and that's a very good example because um, uh, you know it can also be the same like exercise and fitness you know martial arts is a very specialized vocabulary sometimes uh, even in English <laughs> right that if I I could talk about jujitsu and if another native speaker another American listening might not really know what I'm talking about because we have so many like weird little names for things in jujitsu for the techniques and the movements. And uh, if you don't know it, then you really don't, it's hard to understand it, right? It's really don't know what the topic is. You're like, oh, I don't understand. What are all these words and phrases? All right, guys. So vocabulary, just a quick review, what you need to do First, you've got to get the new words, right? You've got to learn them the first time. You've got to find them somewhere from listening and reading mostly. And then second, some system of reviewing. These are the two things you need to do. And we discussed a lot of different ways to do that. So I'm looking forward to our challenge. Find your conversation partners now. So remember, we start the challenge April 20th. April 20th. 
next month. You have a few weeks to find people to talk to. You need to find people. The whole challenge is about talking to other people, conversations. You can do this online. You can do this with other Effortless English members or learners. Okay, go to get on my Gab account. Go to my Gab account. It's that social media, gab. dot com. AJ Hoag. Follow me there and join our Gab group. On my Gab page, you'll see the link to the Gab group. Join it and create a conversation group, or find one conversation partner. It's up to you. Okay, just find that group or. Make make your own group, organize your own group yourself, so you're ready when we start on April twentieth. You can start talking to other people as much as you want. Option two is to pay for it, <laughs> pay people to talk to. This is good if you want to talk to native speakers. Maybe you want to focus on Americans. Maybe you want to focus on Australians. Then go to Italki is the one I know best. Italki. I T A L K I dot com. I talky. The prices are very reasonable, not so expensive. You can find conversation partners, and you can pay them.、Uh, it's like five to ten dollars an hour usually. So you could do that, you know, once a week. You could do that every day if you have enough money. <laughs>、um, or you can do a mix. I recommend a mix. So talk to some effortless English members. It's free. And then also talk to some native speakers that you have to pay, or do a language exchange. That can also be free with a native speaker. All right, guys, lots of love to you. I will see you next time. Join my VIP program, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Remember, VIP members, we're doing another meeting、uh, in just less than two weeks. We'll do a meeting. We're going to talk about this challenge, and I'm going to give extra help. To VIP members, give you some extra support and help. All right. See you next time. Bye for now.